Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson and I am a breeze. We're going to be talking about clinical audits and quality improvement projects. So it was before that you didn't necessarily have to do an audit or a QIP to get your Crest form signed off, but Crest 2020 and onwards, it looks like they're going to keep that around because I guess they really want you to be that well-formed doctor when you, when you start in training. Now, what we're going to discuss is how you can go about getting an audit or a QIP done and what it really means to get it done. All right, now, you can do these things back home. It's not that it has to be a UK or NHS-based audit or QIP. It might be a little bit easier for you to do it when you're in the NHS, especially if you're, you're not from a, a hospital or a country that necessarily has them structured the way that they want them structured here. But that doesn't mean just because you've done it back home, it's completely negated and there's no, you know, there's no weight to what you've done. So within the NHS, what you need to do is you need to find your audit department in your hospital. There's definitely going to be an audit and clinical governance department, and you need to become best friends with these guys so that you can understand, first of all, what the audit cycle is, if you've not already understood that, and if there are any national audits that you can participate in. With that, they might also be able to tell you about any other audits that are ongoing. You can speak to the consultant in the department that you're in if they have any audits that are currently pending that they need help with, or if they have any ideas for any audits. You can speak to any of your colleagues if they've started an audit they need help with, or if there's anyone else that you can kind of chip in with. Try and make sure that the audit or QIP that you do is clinically relevant to what you're later going to be applying for. If you are in surgery, do not do an audit in gynae unless somehow that gynae audit is surgically related, okay? So when I was in a and &E, I did an audit about the indications of abdominal x-ray. So you might think to yourself, well, what does that have to do with a and &E? That sounds, you know, pretty surgical because I know surgeons, they always like to ask for abdominal x-rays. But you have to remember, when you're working in a setting like a and &E, a patient will come in with a lot of different presentations and a and &E is not just one stream. A patient could be a medical patient, it could be a surgical patient, it could be a gynecological OBS patient, it could be a pediatric patient. There's so many things that a patient can present with. So when we took this into consideration, um, we saw that a lot of patients who were coming in were just being given abdominal x-rays because they were going to be referred to surgery if they had some sort of vague or even specific abdominal pain. And with that, when we went to actually present it, we made sure we presented it not only to the A&E department, but also to the surgeons and radiology because all three of us, all three of these departments really formed the crux of the audit and what we were looking to change. Because if the A&E doctors don't know why they're doing an abdominal x-ray and they're just doing them willy-nilly, it won't make a change in our cycle. If the surgeons don't know why we're going to say, no, 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 we don't need to do an abdominal x-ray, it won't make a change. And if radiology doesn't back up what we're saying to make sure that if somebody does put in that request to question whether or not that request is appropriate, it won't make a change. So whatever you are doing, whatever your action plan is, you really need to make sure that it is relevant to all the people that you are talking to. If you're going to do so, some sort of an audit that you know is going to have an overlap with another department because it is something that is mutually you know, affected, try and make sure that they are brought in so they can hear back the feedback and what you've learned from your audit. Because that just makes your entire audit more well-formed. Um, if you're still super unsure about how you're going about this audit or you're really confused and you don't know if you're doing the right thing, do not, do not hesitate to speak to your clinical supervisor or the consultant that you're working under or even just the audit department. They're really helpful. They do this all the time. They know exactly how to proceed. Um, and they, for the most part, as far as I've ever seen, will even help you with collecting the data and figuring out what data is actually appropriate for what you're looking for. So once they've gotten that all done for you and you've gone through it and you've understood what you kind of want, but you're still so unsure about how it can be presented, you can talk to them. And then they will help you, even if they have like audit meetings, you can present at those audit meetings. When you're done, when you've kind of completed this part of your audit, they can give you a certificate stating, you know, so-and-so did this audit and, and these were their jobs, or, you know, whatever things that you did, like data collection, data analysis presentation and all that kind of stuff. You don't necessarily need to complete the full cycle, but it would be nice if you could. It is difficult, especially if you're a non-training person, and then you're going to be moving on. But whatever portion that you can do, you should at least get to the point where you have your action plan and what you expect or hope can come out of the audit that you've done. 
Because it's all well and good to have an idea of something that you want to change, but you should be able to explain what it is that you want changed. Because without that, it just looks like you know it's just empty words. You're not actually wanting to do any of those things. So don't be afraid of an audit. Don't be afraid of a QIP if you've never done them before. There are a lot of people in the same situation. Maybe a couple of you can come together and be like, hey, let's try and do this, figure it out, you know, together. But it, like I said, at the end of the day, don't worry about it. It's something that can easily get done. And it's something that's really important for you to understand how you can help change your environment. Thank you, Breeze, for your nice explanation uh, about the clinical audits and QIPs. It's just to show uh, uh, there are article in our road to UK site uh, about audits and quality premier projects and what we've discussed already in the article, which you can access uh, easily and get the information that you need to do and run a, conduct a clinical audit. As you can see, there are seven steps of conducting a clinical audit, as we have described here choosing a topic, finding the standard of best practice, then collecting the data that you want to do an audit about, then analyzing the data against the standard, then presenting the results and discussing the possible changes, implementing changes that are agreed upon, and doing a re-audit. As you can, I've already seen the photo in the, uh, the video, but it's just to give you a nice big picture about how this entire thing is a cycle. Uh, and then uh, being smarter in your plan, an action plan, uh, uh, make a smart plan which is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. There are some golden rules that we have said here and how to do a quality improvement projects. Clinical audit is a big part of a QIP. So there are other PDSA cycle, plan, do, study, act and uh, performance benchmarking. All these other things is root cause analysis. All these other things in a QIP you can get help from the audit department. Those people are, are, it is their job to do uh, all these things and know about all these things. So if you just ask for their help, once you've done the, the, the major part, clinical audit, they can help you achieve uh, this quality improvement project. I think that's all about doing a, a clinical audit and quality improvement project. Let's move on to our next lesson, which uh, in which Ibris have talked about taste weeks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.